Hey, Peter. Thanks so much for joining me, man. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Ray. Appreciate it. Yeah, definitely. I'm excited to see some of the photos you picked out for this one. I am. I'm excited to see the ones you picked out. It, I got I'm some good ones for lie, you. It, it took me a while to pick some. I was like, Did oh, it? man, what do I go with this? Do I, go with this? <laughs> I, nice. uh, I tried so to give it some it, thought. Yeah. Yeah. I try. I like to, I like to follow a lot of local photographers. So I definitely picked a lot of them, but oh, cool, a man. little bit That's of awesome. everything. So uh, where's local for you? Local is Maryland. So right outside okay. Washington, DC. Um, we do, we do get a lot of bird, cool birds coming through here, but it's, yeah. uh, yeah. Nice, man. How long have you been shooting? Let's see. So I want to say I got my first like little rinky dinky Nikon camera in like 2017. Okay. Didn't really do anything serious. And then I started working at, um, Patuxent, uh, wildlife research center. Oh, and nice. I got this cool opportunity to work with the sea ducks that they had there in captivity. So I Those did a lot photos of photos like... were insane. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, you know, it's not every day you get to like be next to a Harlequin, like 10 inches away. Right? So, yeah. Yeah. So I just did some like, you know, against a plain backdrop and that's, that's, that was actually me like teaching myself sort of the fundamentals. Okay. Um, you know, like, like, like you did wedding stuff before this, right? Yeah. So I'm sure a lot of that like helped you when you went into absolutely wildlife outdoors. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's yeah. what I was doing here. So nice, man. Then, yeah. When I first since... saw these, I was like, are you kidding me, man? <laughs> yeah. 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 And people are like, are those wild? And I'm like, I hope not <laughs> not be that close to them. But um, <laughs> yeah, so they, you know, they, they were part of different so uh, cool. conservation research projects. So that's how I got started. And then I've just been, you know, sort of doing it ever since um, yeah. nothing, you know, serious just like in my free time that kind of thing that's cool which we all never have enough of right exactly exactly yeah when's uh have you been out much lately or i actually yeah just that kingfisher that last kingfisher there i was over uh somebody tipped me off about a um like a heron that would like stand on this one log every okay. night as the sun came down behind it oh and i was like oh i gotta go check this out of course the heron wasn't there <laughs> i was just, I just gonna say he wasn't right <laughs> yeah. yeah 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 so i was literally lining up a shot of this um this spider that was in frame like building its web at sunset oh wow and literally as that happened this kingfisher came and perched in the like shot that i had composed for the spider so i just no had kidding. to like dial the focus back i'm like there's the kingfisher so <laughs> that's yeah, awesome. that was the last time not, nice, not too much in 2020 but um yeah the few times i have gone out it's been real great yeah no, that's awesome man great story about that all right you ready to get into it let's do it all right cool man all right, we'll start off with one of that you chose from Kyle. Dude, Kyle. what like insane with this shot, man. I, I remember seeing this when he shared it. I'm like, come on. Yeah, yeah. So actually the way I saw it was uh was like this this um like Smithsonian producer for like nature documentaries and stuff. Yeah. He had he had shared it and I was like, yeah. holy crap. And then I recognized the the name Kyle. Sure. Um Kyle's yeah. awesome. And yeah, this shot I just I love it. I love it. So I mean, much. so on top, like, here's the one thing. And I think I may have even commented or had a conversation with him about it. But I know, like, the one thing that blew me away about this shot is when you see something like this, right, this behavior, even with the amount of time I've been shooting, I would still, I, I know myself, I would probably just be like, Oh, just shoot, just get the shot, right? Yet, he had like the foresight to compose this like foreground yeah. offset here, nice yeah. low angle, you know, like he's got all that going on. So it's got, you know, the light the reflection there, the, like, yeah, right. The reflection, so the low angle, together. the composition, like all of the normal, like dial it in for a sweet portrait shot is, is yeah. here. And then on top of that, you have like the most incredible behavior, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Uh, going on there. So just, yeah, I think it's just like, a, insane. yeah. A combination of like obviously right place, right time. Yeah. I don't even know if like I don't even know uh what mink like breeding season or like rearing season is, but me neither. Yeah. <laughs> you know, no. it's like yeah. Not so a clue. Good. Yeah. The only time I've ever seen them is when they're just like scurrying around the marsh and I'm like, exactly. Oh, there's a mink and then yeah. I don't even get a shot, you know? Yeah. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So um I had to pick this one. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good that's that's a good one to start it off, man. It's gonna be hard to top that now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we yeah. kicked it off strong. So all right, cool. Let's uh I got one for you here. Let's go. Yes. Now this who is this? Drew Drew, yeah, he's a guy from uh, Jersey. Jersey. Okay. Yeah. I yeah, I really like this one. I like the uh, so, sort of the duality of the the colors there. You got the like bright yellow orange on the right, fading off into the the brown black on the left. Yeah. Um, and same thing with the bird. It's like 
reminds me of like a yin and yang symbol almost. If that makes oh sense. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Um, no, just like the light versus dark contrast is really nice. Totally. And yeah, he's, it's got such a great split there. Yeah, like interacting with uh, with that sand crab there. Yeah, it's awesome. Yep. Yeah, yeah, another one, right? So great, great light, great moment on its own, just a solid light for a portrait. And then on top of that, it's got the behavior, you know, yeah. Uh, yeah. which just kind of takes it to that next level. I know for me, that's the one thing I'm always kind of, I wouldn't say struggling, but it is certainly at times a struggle, but you're trying to just add that into the mix right. is always such a tough thing. So, right. Yeah. Um, I think like, even if we took away that sand crab and he was just sort of posed there, yeah, even that would be a great shot, but then you exactly. take it to the next level with that behavior for sure. Yeah. And that always, it's just so much harder to get behavior to right. work, right? Like how many times, you know, maybe I've been set up in a scene like this where, uh, and then the Sanderling just faces the wrong way, right? It, the crab is like the other way or he's facing straight towards me. So the silhouette yeah. just looks stupid. It's not like a good shape, you know? So right. Drew has like everything working out. And then exactly what you said, right? That nice, like bright gradient that's not blown out, which is also yeah. nice. And then just kind of fading nice into the, uh, mm -hmm. to the darker silhouette there, man. So yeah, it's a pretty good one. Love it. Nice and vivid. Uh, speaking of vivid, here's another one. Look at that. We'll stick with the orange theme here. You know what? This is so funny. Uh, you know, a shot from the uh, always amazing Scott Keys. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't even know if he realized it. I I'd be curious to know if he realized like how much this looks like breath when you view it small. Yeah. Cause I'm guessing like you view this like on a big screen, like filling the screen and that's not something you kind of maybe notice as much, you know, but then yeah, when it's yeah, small, yeah. especially presented on Instagram, like on a phone, just it just look looks like dragon's breath. <laughs> <laughs> totally. <laughs> just like overboard, you know, I think that's literally what job drew me to this picture is I was yeah. going through Scott's feed and I was like, so many great pictures but yeah i saw this and i was like hold on i have to open this up and see what's going on here yeah yeah and uh i know it's another great example of of you know a very skilled photographer doing what they got to do to take advantage of not the like most flattering light you know what right, i mean he right. said That's it exactly was like why i chose it yeah it was good and then it got harsh so he moved in to you know take advantage of something yeah. in harsh light getting that darker background and you know the composition is great here as always from him and then the uh the full-on singing pose like it, they, they right. don't open their mouths much more than that when they're singing you know right and then a gorgeous black burning and male you know yeah so, yeah and just yeah. like yeah like you said like the skilled photographer will see that recognize that it's not the best conditions and yeah. and do something to make it work Totally. Definitely yeah. Did. Definitely yeah. Did. Cause I could tell you myself so many times I've just completely screwed shots like that. You know, you just overexpose yeah. it and you know, I've yeah. gotten better at it over time, but uh, right. yeah, <laughs> definitely. It was funny it's when such... I asked him to use this one, he's like, yeah, you can, uh, you can go over this as long as you don't grill me too hard. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, I have to only say nice things. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's what, you know, I, when I first uh, started thinking about the concept for this show, I'm like, we just have to have, you know, really good photos that we just talk about what we like, because that would yeah. be like the most messed up thing. Like, Hey, let's start pointing <laughs> out all these like negative things about <laughs> photos for people. <laughs> no, but yeah. I think that show wouldn't have a very longevity. You no, know? no, it's yeah. not, it doesn't have the same appeal. Yeah, no, uh, there's certainly a way to learn from that, but to yeah, not share yeah. that with everybody is probably yeah. the best way to go. You know, do that on a more, more private scale. <laughs> all right, here you go. What do you think of that one? Oh, look at that. Yeah, I, I, I love it. I love the uh, it's crazy because it, it seems like there's so much detail, even though the lighting is I don't know if it's uh, like backlit during sunset oh, or sunrise is, yeah. or something. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's like normally seeing a shot like that, I wouldn't expect even to see that much detail on the fur or anything. But yep. you can see you can really see everything there. Yeah. Um, and the, the composition in terms of where the dog is placed. It, yeah, I love it. Yeah, like how interesting to offset that, right? It's just like yeah, full yeah. head-on view, right? Facing right at you. Right. Um, but, I'm not going to uh, lie. I would probably, like my first instinct after taking that would be to just 8 by 10 Instagram Square it up, crop. right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right? But I'm yeah. so glad they didn't. Yeah, yeah. I mean, just, I mean, when you got a background like that, why not yeah. include more of it? You know what I mean? Exactly. Um, exactly. And I think it also makes you, uncomfortable isn't the right word, but I don't know, it makes you kind of inspect the photo a little bit more, stay with it a little bit more, right? There's almost a little bit of like, you know, uh, yeah. a different balance to it. So it just kind of- My eye uh, definitely wanders. I mean, yeah. by virtue of the fact that there's more to to, to yeah. look at. Yeah. No, but I the like eye that. contact on that and then like those ears, yeah. like, come on, look at those things. They're just like the size of its head, know. you know? I know. It's, it's such incredible. a, like a unique uh, portrait or, you know, just yeah. 
head shape. You know, it's interesting that you mentioned the eye contact. And if you go, I don't know if you still have the tabs open, but like yeah. this is an interesting difference compared to the first mammal shot by Kyle. Yes. Whereas with Kyle, you're sort of peering into yeah. uh, the animal, like sort of you're, you're not engaging with it's, the animal. Yes. You're witnessing you know I mean? the behavior. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And especially with that, with that tree, like covering yep. up the right hand third. Um, whereas this Great one, point. it's like you're confronted by this, oh, yeah. this wild dog. So, this yeah, is a I connection agree. with the subject. Definitely. Whereas the other one is watching. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, it's a great point. Um, and then, you know, talking about that lighting too. So loved everything. I pretty much agree with everything you said. Um, so I don't have much more to add. But I think we're seeing so much detail on this side of the subject because that backlight is so filtered through these trees. So, mm -hmm. you know, that's definitely what's making that yeah, bokeh yeah. back there. Uh, it's not just like full on open field, direct sun coming in on right, the back right, of right. this. Cause then uh, you just so, have a silhouette at that point. Yeah, exactly. You know, or at least like a, that kind of darker rim lit kind of thing, you know? Right. Um, so right. this lighting is just giving us, I mean, just like the softest glow around some of the edges there and the yeah. ears and stuff like that. Yeah. And so, yeah, I think he was able to just nail the exposure on both of these, but, uh, yeah, it was just a powerful image when you see it. I mean, I can imagine, I like, even on Instagram, it's powerful. But can you imagine seeing, like, a nice big print or a full screen, large monitor? It would just be like, wow, you know? Yeah, and it's just an awesome species. I mean, yeah, no I'm pretty sure yeah. they're critically endangered, so you don't Are get they? to see yeah. this much. Yeah. yeah. Cameron. Uh, yes. The, the <laughs> Look man, at the, the colors myth, the here, legend. man. Right? I know. This dude has been just killing it this year. Yeah. So I brought up Cameron. Like I said, I like to keep it local. He's, uh, yeah. He's got to be like 30 minutes from my house. Yep. Um, so local Marylander. Yes. And uh, this this actual scene, uh, I'm pretty sure is right by my house if I if I know where he's shooting. But yeah, it's just like the colors in this. I just couldn't pass it up. How many of these shots I've seen from similar locations, uh, you know, um, indigo buntings in yeah. sunflower fields, very common thing for people to shoot at that time of year. And so how do you put a unique spin on that? And yeah. I think Cameron definitely did that here. It's a backlit Absolutely. shot. So we got like, you know, some real soft pinpoint rim light coming in on the bird there. Um, and then so interesting, right? The one flower that the bird is on is the only one facing the other way. I was just going to say that. So like how wild, you yeah. know? I literally have to or lean in. Is it, to look is at it the facing the other way or is it just new? That's what it's, I was going to say. I oh, think it's you know what? It's not blooming. fully open. Yep, yep, yeah. Yep. It's blooming, okay. which is even cooler. I mean, it's yeah. like, just look at the shapes of like the tendrils coming off. There exactly. The bird. Yep. Yeah. It's so just, having it, that darker and just really helps pull in. in. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Yeah. And then, you know, because of that backlit, right. He's got the little mm -hmm. bokeh coming through the trees up in the top of the sun there. Um, just to give a little bit more interest at the top and just kind of balance it out, man. So yeah. Yeah. And Absolutely these are, outstanding. these are pretty tall, uh, tall flowers. So, you know, to, I would guess the, the, the foresight to, he's like, a tall dude. <laughs> yeah. I don't think I've ever actually met him, but yeah, I'll go yeah. down to this field sometimes when it's in season and like there are guys out there on ladders trying to get yeah. these shots. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, and, uh, I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. But no, this one, yeah, it's just everything about it. Oh, that's so cool. All right. Nice job, Cam. Yep. <laughs> Look at these things. This is okay. No way. <laughs> I was literally adding this to my collection. Really? And I was like, I was like, I don't know why I didn't. But um, yeah. oh my gosh, yeah, no, I love this. This this is one of the pictures that I was gonna actually bring on so here. So crazy. Um, yeah, I mean the the, I like that you added a black and white one. I didn't even think to do that. I'm so used to seeing color in nature photography that uh, I really think black and white has a uh, really unique look. It's so hard to do right though. You That's know? true. That's also that true. is that is a That's very tough true. thing. It just an image needs such good contrast built into yeah. the image for it to really yeah. work, in my opinion. You know, I mean, and the fact that it. they're lined up at the horizon line like this, like if right. they had been an inch lower on yeah. the screen, it you couldn't. I mean, you could probably get away with a color image, but yeah. I don't think black and white would work. Agreed. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So we have these darker subjects like right up in that lighter sky, you know, and then um, I love that the uh, wing position is opposite wings down, mm -hmm. wings up. You know, so that's pretty mm -hmm. cool. And then just, yeah, the fact that they're little, both at almost the exact same height is like insane. Trails um, of, of water behind them. Yeah. Yeah. Guy. And, and how to even focus on these shots. Like that has <laughs> got to happen so fast. Where do so, you even put your focus point? Like, what yeah, is you know, I, I mean, no I'm guessing it's a pre-focus thing where you just kind of are anticipating where they're going to come up. I mean, he's got, you can see he's got a decent chunk of depth, depth of field here, but 
you know, back here already, like that far back, it's totally out of focus already. So, right. um, my, my best guess for how I would go about doing it, I'm not speaking for him at all. I don't know yeah, how he yeah. did it, but how I would go about doing it would be, you know, yeah, drop the, or uh, kick that aperture up, get a little depth of field, pre-focus in a good range where I think they're going to jump and then just, just spray wait for it. it. You know, yep. yeah, yep. and hope they come up in the right spot. But uh. yeah, combination of of, I mean, just obviously there's a lot of skill involved because you can't choose the composition like this. I mean, you yeah. can to an extent, but like you have to yeah. set up for it. You have to know obviously your settings where yep. you where the shot's going to happen, and then just luck. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah, and then pretty cool in his caption here is that yeah you know, he definitely he got a uh, a highly commended a selection. Yeah, in yeah, the, in the awesome. photo contest with it, so that's understandably. Awesome. Yeah. yeah, I've seen a lot of his stuff. I, I uh, he he must really great a lot photographer. Yeah, I was just gonna say, uh, yeah, Amit, um, Amit, out of uh, I think he's out of Israel, if I'm not and mistaken. And his jewelry so. is also very yeah. cool. I've checked it out. Yeah, nice, <laughs> nice side note. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway. All right. Uh, yes. Another great local photographer, Tyler. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's so funny. I've known Tyler for a very long time. We've chatted online like countless times and I think we've only shot together once if I'm not mistaken. Like we've only crossed paths once. So yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I've I, same. I mean, I've known him for like, actually, you know what it was? I think I, you had posted my handle on one of your stories after we yeah. shot together yeah and tyler messaged me he's like hey you know ray too and I was nice. like, oh. so that's how i got connected to tyler oh cool nice. um and he again is in my area and i just i when i found this it was it was on my feed like first photo yeah and unfortunately i don't know if the zoom recording will show the the rain in the shot yeah, I, I don't does. know. I mean, I can do a little bit to zoom in there just yeah, to see. Yeah, but, yeah, but it's got this rain, like really, really cool rain, it. just yeah. like a haze over the front. Yeah, and the, his composition here and just the overall kind of moodiness of the shot, which is a perfect fit with that rain, right? So, you know, it's it's all too easy for anybody and myself included to, to kind of just like, Oh, it should be brighter, you know? Right. Uh, but that doesn't, that's not the right mood for this shot. I think exactly. the fact that he kept everything a little bit more dim um, yeah. kind of really uh, places that. And then compositionally, you know, having this giant log pointing in this one pointing in this right. one curving up, you know, and then the head everything. to offset the other direction. Yeah. Yeah. No kidding. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And like, I, like you said, you're, you're all, like, I would be looking for like, oh man, I need those bright colored leaves in the background, but like that's yeah. not the point of this shot. Correct, and that's why it's so nice. Yeah, yeah, it stands it stands out yeah. because of that. Yeah, definitely. He's always really good with composition too. I noticed that uh, just in, consistently in his work. You know, he definitely obviously thinks about it a lot. So definitely, uh, definitely. Yeah, great choice, man. Great Love choice. It. Oh. Talk I about a unique this. way for a common I species. I'll just Canada goose right there. That's what that's they are. The, that's a goose? Yeah, those are all Canada oh my geese. Oh gosh, that's yeah. awesome. Isn't that crazy? You know, I was actually looking for photos like taken in different angles than our yeah. typical angles. And yeah, yeah, um, yeah. this is like a perfect example of that. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah, and I think this was a recent share. Yeah, four days ago, I think he dropped this. Um, and so it was, uh, it was definitely one that stood out to me. I was just like, wow, I couldn't believe, you know. And yeah. then I was... I couldn't even figure out the species at first. I had to read the caption to see it, you know? Uh, right, right. Yeah, no, I, I love the, the, like the species isn't even important. Uh, correct. This, you know, yeah. it's just the, the movement and the, the, the sort of way that they're all flowing, like in a weird random way. Yeah. And I think it's, yeah, you know what? There's, it's almost like, almost like a circle here, almost yeah. like another circle here. Like, and then they're combining in the middle and spilling down, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And then the one random one flapping away, you know? <laughs> just there's yeah, always got to be one. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh man no that is really nice um and, and so, so i this has got to be a drone right yeah drone. yeah area. yeah i was just gonna say and such a uh such a great example of how to photograph a common species in a unique way definitely it can be done you know definitely uh, yeah yeah and and responsibly too because you know like if this was some far off remote like group of rare waterfowl a drone might totally freak them out and, totally. and flush them whereas with the geese you know they don't care they're they flipping at the bird yeah city <laughs> yeah city noise all day hear exactly. gunshots and stuff so yeah, yeah really cool although interesting have you ever encountered canada geese outside of like the normal park situation kind of in more remote areas and then all of a sudden they're and i haven't seen them they're not like 
waterfowl like duck skittish you know but i've yeah. totally seen canada geese where they're just like way different and yeah, harder yeah, yeah. to get close to i'm like what the heck is going on here you know <laughs> yeah. country geese instead yeah of geese. exactly yeah <laughs> they're like yeah, not used to it it's so funny how that works yeah. um have you ever done uh, drone photography i haven't you know i was looking to Me get neither. a drone and i haven't like it never even crossed my mind to do wildlife photography yeah. with a with a drone until seeing images like this um yeah. because obviously there's a there's an ethical like you don't want to you don't want to scare stuff there's certain thing ways you got to do it yeah right exactly. right like the, i've seen people on instagram like chase different animals yeah. with a drone and be like yeah. check out this high action video or whatever but, <laughs> yeah, but like exactly. this is a perfect use of it that i wouldn't even yep. think to do yeah totally have you well, done any? So, I saw. I, have I not, saw you were no. goofing around with a drone the other day. That was my sister. She has Your a drone. Sister, okay. She's a real estate photographer down in Florida, and so she has a drone for that. And uh, yeah, I'm putting together. I'm hoping to release in like a couple of days an online uh, wildlife photography course that I've been working on for oh, well awesome. over a year. Um, so in thinking about just trying to put together like a trailer to promote it, I was like, oh, it'd be cool to get some drone footage while I was down there last year. And so we did that. And yeah, right. you know, I was just waiting for her. Got right. bored and started dancing like an idiot. So, <laughs> everybody, go check that out if you haven't. Seen that. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, because it's on my story. It's gonna go quick. So, yeah. Uh, by the time this comes out, it'll be gone. Yeah, uh, dude, this photo is actually it's so fun. I have it bookmarked too uh, mm -hmm. to to include, and you beat me to the punch on it. So, there we go. Uh, yeah, excellent job. But um, yeah, I love this guy's. Uh, uh, he is stuff. such actually, a great photographer, and the stories behind it. I really yeah, love that he kind of yeah. you know shares a lot more about the shots as well. And I said I I like to keep it local, but for this one I was like this guy I I think he's in Bahrain I think or uh, you might be right yeah let me see let's see if it says here um I'm not it sure does the flag not, but, but I, I yeah. scrolled to one of his his uh, photos and it had a geotag in Bahrain okay so, gotcha so but I nonetheless like his stuff is awesome and yeah. um it's another uh common species so it's not a common species to the Americas but no. Uh, it was just like you were saying with the, the previous geese shot, like yeah, photographing common species. First of all, it lets you get closer, lets you no learn their behavior more because they're around more. Yeah. And then you get stuff like this. So yeah. definitely he used that to his advantage. The framing here is so on yes. point, you know, uh, kind of looks like background there. This one looks like foreground, then the curved branch. And then mm -hmm. the way these things are all just jammed together mm -hmm. like that is so absolutely so great. So good. And yeah. you got the behavior like from the leftmost one. And well, and yeah, both these two turning out that way, both yeah. these two turning out that way. like this is like a like a group portrait pose, like, like you know, like choreographed. Yeah, yeah exactly. That's yeah. And I like the, even if the the red leaves, I'm assuming those are weren't there. Yeah. Um, I would still love the photo, but like just having those fill the negative space for yeah. whatever reason, just so good. No doubt. They, they frame it in so much better yeah. to just kind of really shove your eye right to those birds there. Right. Yeah. Um, and the other thing about the common species I'd like to mention too, is they're so often overlooked, you know, Definitely. and it, it's so funny how, like, at least in our area, right. I'm sure almost everybody can relate to when you first start wildlife photography, like one great blue heron, like you just photograph them constantly because yep. it's like the first big bird that you can find and it's so unique and honestly it's so weird how you're like how did i not know these giant birds were here all my life you yeah. know and like yeah. you never paid attention to them yeah. I've like you felt like I, i've never seen one before you know i think i was right. probably like maybe i don't know 15 16 years old you know grew up out hunting fishing all that never even crossed one and then i see one i'm like oh my god what is this and then all yeah. of a sudden you realize you're like oh they're everywhere you yeah, know? this is like a five foot tall bird that I've just <laughs> yeah, overlooked exactly. my whole life. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but anyway, you know, when you first get into photography, you're so into shooting that kind of stuff. And then I, for me, I just so quickly just went away. And now it's just like, oh, yeah, great blue hair and whatever. Like I just overlooked them so many Definitely. times. Unless conditions are really good, then I'll certainly still photograph right. them. But like the one with Tyler. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Perfect example. Yeah. You know, um, and I, it, it kind of makes me wonder like what would happen if I just concentrated on them? Like I cannot tell you the last time I ever went out. I don't, I don't know that I ever have. And was like, I'm going to go I'm photograph a great for, blue. Today, right. Right. You know? But that's what I'm saying is like, is like with, with stuff that is so common, if you actually sit down and, and, uh, you know, dedicate some time to like figure yeah. out their behavior, you can just yep. get whatever shot you want. I mean, yeah. not, you know, not literally, but like you have yeah. so many more opportunities to get cool shots. There's one at the pond that I live at here at my condo um, every single day. And I, I go down there and end up flushing it every time to photograph a kingfisher, you know? So I'm just like, 
screw you, great blue heron. Yeah, I'm yeah. going for this kingfisher because that's yeah. a tougher bird, harder to get. Right. But why? Like one of these days, I gotta like buckle down yeah. and just like go out for that. Um, exactly. Great blue heron. Yeah. All right, last one. Getting through it nice and quick. Oh. Yeah. I love that. Isn't I that cool? That. Like, grieve. Oh my gosh. It is. Yeah. Dude, the Great Salt Lake. Sh- great. Oh really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, this is actually uh, one of the mentorship students I work with. Um, okay, okay. Yeah, she shared this the other day, and I was just like, oh, I have to ask if I can I can include yeah. this in one of my videos because yeah, no, I that love is, this shot. That is awesome. Yeah. Um, just, the, I mean, the shape of the bird, like yep. the the colors, the I like that it's not, uh, I don't know if this was by design or if this was just by virtue of being far far away, but you can still see the sky, like details yeah. of clouds slightly. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, no, I think it was exactly what you said, right? Just being further away. And, yeah. um, you know, she chose like a more scenic composition. I, I believe she's still currently shooting with a zoom lens right now. Uh, yeah. So she had kind of backed off just to show more Perfect. of that, you know? Perfect. Yeah. And the cool thing to me is like, I mean, I know, I've, I think I've even talked about this already on some of these episodes that I've done with these really tiny, small in the frame shots. But it's amazing to me how, I mean, what's this like? three to five percent of the pixels in the entire image is the bird right yeah and yet that's like it's instantly the subject unmistakably the subject that's where your eye goes yeah you know so it's such a cool way in these like clean spacious silhouettes like that to make a bird small in the frame include the scenery and yet it still is the star of the show which is such a cool thing that's hard to do that's hard to do and and yeah no i've I've literally opened up shots like this in in lightroom and i'll be like oh maybe the the bird's too small yeah. i need to keep zooming in and zooming yep. in and zooming in uh in, in a situation like this and it's like if it's if it's you know if it's like this where it's got a unique shape it's totally black surrounded by color yep. like there's no need to it's your exactly. eye just goes there yeah and then the other cool thing that happens too you know, listen, I, we don't get this much in this area because we don't have something that has like this much flat and space to yeah. it um, yeah. as, the, as the Great Salt Lake. But the cool thing is, right, so she, she is shooting through so much more atmosphere here that actually the black mountains back there aren't quite as deep, rich black as the bird itself, uh, you yeah, know, I see because that. so they're a little bit more faded. It's like a, um, a muted black, like a exactly, dark gray. Exactly, right? Yeah. yeah, just like a real dark gray. Uh, but again, yeah. that little difference in contrast just really helps slam your eye right to the bird because he is the legit darkest thing in the frame. Absolutely. You know? uh, so Absolutely. it's just like those, those little fine details. Like if, if she were to edit this more contrasty black uh, back there, um, yeah. it might compete a little bit more, you know? Uh, yeah, so yeah, yeah. Just, she, Man. she did like a now, killer job with it. This is like bird related question, but why, why do they make that shape? It's uh, it's the process of their dive. So yeah, oh, it's, okay. it's so like right lifting up okay. and going in for the dive. Yeah. Yeah. Cause um, I've, I've never actually seen a grebe. So yeah. So, which is funny too, because I think if I'm not mistaken, all grebe species can do this, but I definitely know the pied bill grebe can. So their normal dive, I guess it's just easier to get a little effort and dive like head right. first in. Right. But they have this ability to, and I've, I've totally seen pied bills do this. They have this ability to just sit there motionless and compress the air out of their feathers and then like slowly <laughs> sink like a submarine. <laughs> So it's like a stealth mode escape if they are, uh, I've read anyway, that if they're like threatened and they don't want to like make a big disturbance and splash and draw attention, yeah. they'll just like slowly sink oh down. Oh my gosh. That's and so I've funny. totally seen them do it's that like and submarine. it's hilarious. Yeah, exactly. That's funny. You know? Yeah, yeah. I was going to say, because their their feathers are super water resistant, so they yep. keep them buoyant most of the time. Yeah, exactly. And so, yeah, I think they oh. control a lot of their uh, buoyancy just by the amount of air trapped in those feathers, and then they can compress it out and sink down and stuff like yeah. that. So, That's yeah. so funny. Cool little side bit info Love there. So. Dude, awesome, man. Thank you All so right. much. Yeah, this was a blast. We got it. Those were, yeah. those were 10 superb images. This, this Thank you, everybody, were, for letting us... Uh, go over those because they yeah and share them yeah and please check out all the people we uh you know um highlighted here they're all great photographers and they have they all of them have a a ton more photography to check out so um peter where's the best place for people to follow your work is it here on instagram it's here on instagram uh my tag is pete blake photo because somebody took peter so whoever that is (laughs) i'm not a fan but uh i also (laughs) i also dabble in uh youtube you know just doing some wildlife yeah what's the last video you put out so that was, I think it was a, like a month or two into lockdown um, yeah. of the, yeah. And uh, I, 
I had like so many birds, obviously I was inside, you know, I'm yep. in a pretty urban area. Um, so I just set up a little, uh, it was with your help actually. I mean, I, I consulted you a little bit yeah. about the best way to do it. So just like using a bird feeder, just very minimal, like set up to get natural looking shots. Um, and so like that, that Cardinal there top, right. Yep. Uh, that that's using that, that method. So I just, I just did a little demo of how I did it, how other people can do it. Love that, that video, man. So yeah, definitely everybody check that out. It's certainly yep. worth it. And give uh, Peter here a follow. And then let us know the, uh, the course your online course you're working on. Is yes. that going to be through your website or through? Yeah. Yeah. It'll be blasted all over my website and social media. I'm not going to be Got quiet it. about it. So you, you won't miss it. <laughs> we will hear about it. Awesome. Yes, exactly. Awesome. Yeah, Looking forward so. to it. All right, man. Hey, thank you so much. Really appreciate it. It was gr great chatting with you. And thanks Absolutely. for taking some awesome photos, man. Yeah. Thanks for having me, Ray. All right, man. Have a good one. You too. Talk to you later.